Hello everybody, in this video we're going to install the Eclipse IDE for use with Java and I hope that uh, you've already got Java installed. If not, go back to the previous video and install Java. Uh, so go ahead and open up your web browser again. I'm going to use Firefox and uh, this time I'm going to go to the Eclipse download um, URL and uh, my internet is running on a slow side uh, so I'm going to give it a few minutes uh, so it catches up. Here we go. Um, so uh, type in uh, download uh, Eclipse. Uh, that, should, that should work actually. Eclipse. Uh, so let's see. Um, as the making of this video, let's see what the current version is. Um, so go ahead and click on Eclipse Downloads. It doesn't really matter which version you're using. I'm on a Windows uh, 8 machine. Uh, so it, uh, you'll see it installing on Windows 8. Oh, it should be the same for Windows 7. Um, so let's see. Um, so let's take a look to see which version of Eclipse we're going to need. And um, we're going to need the one for Java developers. And so I am on a Windows 32 bit emulated machine. So I'm going to use that one. And it looks like the current version is Juno as of um, the making of this video. Um, so there's a couple of different options you have here. You've got the uh, one for EE, which you don't need. You've got the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. That's the one we're going to download. And it happens to be um, smaller than the EE version as well. You don't need a C++ version of it or JRebel or any of the other one. Eclipse from mobile developers, um, you not, don't necessarily need to use that one either. Um, but uh, that's a brand new selection that they have out. If you click on the details here, um, you can see, um, hopefully a little window is going to pop up any minute now, you can see uh, which each one of the versions includes. All of them are going to include the um, integrated development environment, the GUI, and none of them are going to include Java, so you actually have to install Java on your own. Um, and in here it's going to tell you that this is um, the IDE, the package is going to include C language support, Git client, XML editor, Myon, all these other options here. We're not going to really use it for Android, so I'm not going to really bother with this version of it. But you can kind of see, and the description really doesn't do very much for you. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and come up here, and I'm going to click on this one here because I want to install um, promoted download. Huh? I want to install this one, so I'm going to go ahead and click over here at the Windows 32-bit. Uh, make sure you install the one that's correct for your particular operating system environment. Um, might not be the 32-bit. Um, so down here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the United States, um, it looks like uh, Oregon State University Lab. So I'm going to go ahead and click on there. And I'm going to do it the slow way, but I'll pause the video um, so that uh, as it's downloading, you don't have to wait for it to finish. And then I'll pick up the video when it's finished. Uh, but I've, I've already clicked on here and I'm waiting for the screen to come up. And so now I'm going to save the file. And this is the Eclipse Java Juno um, SR1 for win32.zip and it's a zip file that you're downloading so go ahead and start your download and uh, I will pause this video and come back once my download has completed hello everybody I'm back and the download has um, finished so I'm going to go ahead and close out of uh, close out of the windows here and uh, go ahead and install Eclipse so I'm going to go back to my file manager and I'm going to go back into this time back into my downloads directory and I'm going to find the zipped file and what I'm going to do is just double click on the zipped file um, and it's actually really easy there's just one folder in the clips file um, so actually I'm going to go back here I'm going to unzip it um, so I'm going to select extract all and just uh, use whatever utility that you have to unzip it and now I'm going to unzip it right there in my downloads folder because I'm just going to go ahead and move it um, to another folder and uh, and show you how easy it is to actually install it. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in the, uh, what is this? Path is too long. Um, uh, let's see, okay, I'm just going to skip this file, see what happens here. Uh, some errors in downloading it, I'm not quite sure why. We'll see what happens. In a few minutes, this should hopefully finish. Apparently there was a message about the path being too long. Not quite sure why. I'll pause the video so you don't have to finish for this to ha wait, wait for this to finish. 
Okay, everybody, the uh, extraction worked. Um, I did get a couple of messages, though, telling me something about the directory path being too long, and I just skipped those files. I'm not quite sure what it was. Probably configuration files, but I'm not sure. Anyway, in any case, I'm still in the downloads directory here, and um, I have uh, located the folder that got extracted. So I'm going to move the folder, and I'm going to put it in my program files directory, um, subdirectory. And um, um, I will just put it in the main program file. So I'm going to go back up to uh, downloads directory up here and uh, take this. Uh, take this, And I'm actually going to rename it because I don't want to call it. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to go. Um, I double clicked on it. Instead of renaming the outer directory, I double clicked it. I'm just going to drag Eclipse here and I'm going to stick it in the um, program files uh, folder. So I'm moving it right now to program files. So it's a subdirectory now of program files. And so now I see Eclipse down here. I'm also going to need to put this into my path if I'm going to run it outside. Or I can make a shortcut. Uh, and what I'll do is, if you look right here, you can see Eclipse here. And if I uh, right mouse click on it and I say pin to start for Windows 8, it's going to put it on my uh, start menu. Um, I'm on my taskbar. It, well, actually, it's going to pin it to start, but there's no start menu. Uh, so, well, I'm going to just double click on the file and I'll show you what happens and then I'll show you how you can add it actually to the taskbar. Um, I don't have a start menu, so it's not going to pin to start. Uh, but let's um, go ahead and double click on Eclipse right now to run it. Eclipse, by the way, um, was located in the main directory of the folder. Um, so if you click on the folder here, and you'll see Eclipse. It's, it's like a little purple icon here. If you click on it, it'll go ahead and open it up for you. And uh, the first prompt that it's going to ask you about is going to be uh, something here in which it says, uh, "Would you like to, where would you like the workspace? I'm going to put the workspace in uh, User Behacker Workspace, which is the default. So I'm going to click on here. It says, use this as the default and do not ask me again. Um, so now I have determined that my workspace is set correctly to where I'd like it. Now to add this actually to the taskbar, you can just right mouse click on it here. And uh, if you click on it, well, let's see, it's going to install, so it's going to show me a little thing here. Um, we can always add it to the taskbar, it's no big deal. Uh, here we go. Uh, so now the program is actually opened up, and now if I click here, uh, let's see, there we go. Uh, we can uh, see the main screen that comes up when Eclipse opens up. It says, Welcome to Eclipse IDE. It's basically installed at this point. If you click uh, down here, you can go Tutorials, Samples, What's New, or an Overview, or you can simply close this window, and it's the Welcome window that we just looked at a few minutes ago. And then we'll see the package installer here. And if we go File, New, and then just click on, let's say, for example, Java Project, um, we can you know, type in Hello you know, for Hello World as an example, and then click on uh, Finished down here on the bottom. And we'll see a new project that was created, and uh, a little warning about, uh, well, let's see, uh, not required. OK, that's good. It's not installed. So G, uh, um, EGIT was not detected. Okay, so no problem. I'm going to suppress this warning. We don't. I'm not, we're not going to use this in anything um, that I'm going to do a tutorial on. So I'm going to press OK. And then the home directory says the environment variable home is not set. Uh, following directory will be used for storing uh, files. Okay, it doesn't really matter. We're not using it anyway. So I'm going to go. Don't show this again. And press OK. And then um, if we look over here, we'll see the source structure that is created. And there's no files in here, and there's no source in here. But uh, if we do run, we could actually um, run it if we wanted to, but there's nothing in it, so nothing's really going to happen. Um, but it should go ahead and compile and run it. Uh, so I'm going to select Java application when I run it. I'm going to press OK. And then it's going to say there's a launch error. Selection does not contain a main type. Well, it doesn't contain a main program. So um, you're not going to be able to test it until you look at the next video, which is going to be a Hello World program uh, that we're going to write and compile and test it out. But if you've got this far where you've got a package explorer opened up and you can see window, you can see things you can navigate around, I usually like to close the windows over here on the right-hand side to make the, the window look a little bit better. But um, this is an installed version of uh, the Eclipse browser. So what I can do now is just make a shortcut for it. Uh, so I'm going to close it. And I close it. It says always exit without prompt. Sure, why not? Um, so I closed it up. Now if I go back to the Windows Explorer and I come back in here, I can just make a shortcut for it. Uh, so create a shortcut. 
and uh, here's my shortcut. I can drag it out here and put it out here. Um, or I could actually drag it here and put it down here if I want to, where it says pin to taskbar. And now I've got it on my taskbar. Normally, sometimes, uh, you know, when you click on it, um, it's, it'll tell you, you know, print, pr uh, pin to start, pin to taskbar, and it'll actually put it out here for you automatically. I'm not quite sure why I didn't do it before, but now I can get rid of that there. So now if I want to run it again, I just click on the Eclipse. Um, the Eclipse icon that's on my taskbar. And because the Windows 8 doesn't have a start menu anymore, I've made some other icons for things I normally use, like Visual Studio and stuff, and I've stuck them out here on the taskbar, which just kind of makes it a little bit easier. It's very um, very Mac-like, actually. It makes it a little bit easier to uh, to navigate. So you can, you can see that um, Java is now hopefully working, um, and also Eclipse is working, and we've got uh, the next video I will uh, show you how to install the Android development tools because right now we don't actually have anything installed for Android. Uh, so next video I um, will install the Android SDK and then we'll start writing some Android programs. Okay, so that's the end of the Java Eclipse install and uh, this instruction should be the same for Windows um, 7 and also for XP as well. Uh, but now you see it actually works on Windows 8, although I did get a few messages about the path uh, being too long, um, it did not affect the install, and it appears to be working just fine. So now we know it works on Windows 8. Okay, so next video we'll install the Android tools. Uh, until then.